You're tuned in to 94.9 CHRW. This is Meg Delena, and I'm speaking with Liam, who is the drummer of The Balconies, um, a Toronto pop rock band. Um, so thank you for joining me, Liam. No problem. Thank you. Um, so you'll be performing uh, tomorrow at Norma Jean's uh, with Rival Sons. So um, ha- you've performed in London a couple of times. How do you enjoy touring and performing in London? Well, it's always great to go back to London. We play there quite often, I'd say, uh, minimum, you know, three times a year. Um, we've played often at, you know, call the office mm-hmm. or we used to play at the APK right. quite often when they were, when they were around. Unfortunately, they're no longer, uh, doing shows. I heard they actually but, reopened uh, just recently. They have a new location. Oh, right on. It's, yeah. It's really close to uh, where they used to be. That's great. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, we've never actually played at Norma jeans before, but we look forward to it. Um, we've always had great shows in London. We've done a couple bigger ones at the London music hall. Um, with people such as uh, the Stars and Bedouin, Bedouin Sound, Sound Clash. Clash. Yeah, that's the first time I see yeah. you perform. Oh, cool. Yeah. So um, since I've seen you last, I remember seeing you perform at APK. Um, you guys have come a long way. You performed at Edge Fest, and you even toured Europe, uh, England, and France recently, just last month. And now you're touring yep. Canada. Um, you even performed on Valentine's Day yesterday. That is correct, right? That is correct, yeah. <laughs> so um, what's the experience been like? Um, just kind of coming such a long way, performing at Edgefest in Europe. What's that been like? Oh, it's been great. Um, the, the the traveling is something that's a little bit. Well, I guess I should say the the flight flight traveling is a little bit new for me because um, we usually you know do all our touring in the van and it's uh, keeps it a little more together because you can get out of the van when you make stops and you know stretch your legs and whatnot. So when we flew over to Europe for the first time. It really threw us for a loop because it wasn't just the jet lag, but kind of the exhaustion from being stuck on a plane for 12 hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just, it was wild. Like, we, you know, we flew to the south of France and we were hanging out in Cannes on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in the middle of January, it was pretty sweet. Wait, but do you actually um, have time to relax while you're touring? I thought it was like pretty, you know, busy. Uh, for that, for the, for the France and England stuff, it was a, it was a festival in Cannes. So we were there for five days. Mm-hmm. Um, we only had uh, we only had the one performance in Cannes, but we had you know it was a lot of it was, we were there for Midem, which is like right. a, a conference and festival. So we were there. We actually had a day and a half to kind of kick around Cannes and just hang out. I know you performed at like an Irish pub. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, it was all delegates there for the festival, so it was a, a pretty much an international crowd, mm-hmm. and that was pretty exciting. And then we flew to London, and we had couple of gigs in London. It was a pretty quick little trip, um, but, you know, it was very cool to be going there for the first time, and then we had, we had to cut it a little short. To we, we got added to this Rival Sons tour, and, you know, we just had to jump on that, so um, we had to take some time. We had to postpone the second half of our recording session, actually. Uh, we were supposed to be in there, in the, back in the studio right now, but when the Rival Sons dates came along, we just decided, mm-hmm. you know, that'd be, that'd be worth you know, silly to pass up. So any news of festivals will be in this summer? Um, it's still being sorted out. Right now we're we're looking at the spring. So I know that we're going back to the UK. We're playing some festivals such as uh, Liverpool Sound City in England. And we're doing um, Focus on Wales in Wales, which will be pretty cool. Very nice. Um, there's talk of us going down to China, I think, at the end of really? April. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the, uh, we're hoping to go to Iceland Airwaves, too. Just do a lot of festivals this, this spring and summer. Um, and, you know, there's other ones that are in the works still that we haven't um, you know, locked down yet. Yeah, for right now, though, we're, we're still kind of focused on going back into the studio next week, and we're going to be there for another three weeks and finishing the record. So mm-hmm. for, as far as as far as far our... our Tunnel vision goes, you know, we're kind of looking looking forward to that and all the rest of the stuff we're going to deal with in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so um, speaking of the upcoming record, I know in October you released a video for Do It In The Dark, uh, which some fans yep. will know as Serious Bedtime from your EP. Um, so why yep. did you decide to recreate the track? Is this like a natural progression or a new direction or what was that? Um, it's uh, directly a result of starting to work with Arnold Lanny, who is a really great producer songwriter who's done work for bands such as Our Lady Peace and mm-hmm. Finger Eleven and Simple Plan. Um, so 
in the past, we had just been kind of doing our own versions of the songs. You know, we were recording the songs exactly how we had been playing them live. And um, when we decided to start working with Arnold, he's got such um, a different approach to the whole process of creating recordings. And he always likes to take the songs that the bands have written and strip them down and kind of rebuild them. Um, And that way, you know, you can get all into the nuts and bolts and create the song from the ground up and, Mm -hmm. you know, make something that's going to work really well as an exciting piece on a record, right? So Mm -hmm. um, his approach is a lot more intense than than what we were used to. And, you know, to start our, our relationship together, we thought the best thing to do would be to take a song that he was familiar with, that we were familiar with, and to see how it went, um, you know, and and the sh- we had, I think, a week to do that first tune, and so it was kind of the most effective thing to take something that we were all familiar with and, you know, work with that, and it turned out it went so well that we decided to do the entire record, so we're um, treating Do It In The Dark as the first single from this album, and it's kind of buying us some time while we're in the studio finishing up the rest of the songs. Any word on the name of the album? Not yet. No, we're going to have to wait until the whole record's finished and then, mm. you know, look at all the, the themes and the lyrics and the song titles and uh, see what suits the whole thing the best. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, speaking of themes, um, I, I've gone through your lyrics and I've tried to figure out a theme, but I feel like love and relationships, which tends to be kind of um, ubiquitous in a lot of rock music, those aren't really the most dominant themes. So what are you trying to touch on with your music? Um, I guess a lot of it has to do just with nighttime and kind of being out in the city and so I guess the whole scene that we're involved in, you know, like we're traveling around and mm-hmm. it's kind of a whirlwind of a lifestyle and we're always at at loud concerts where people are being kind of crazy and, you know, was, um, we're always singing about nighttime and kind of dreams and stuff and this whole kind of surreal vibe that comes with being uh in a in a rock band right because it's it's rather un, unusual way to be living you know <laughs> just traveling around and being up late and having to play these high energy concerts mm-hmm. um so we find it's very exciting and um you know because it's our entire life that's what we usually end up basing our themes on right mm-hmm. but as well as you know the more common common theme of relationships it's always pretty difficult to keep relationships uh you know on on the ground when you're in a traveling band because things are always pretty crazy mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh yeah that's pretty common stuff for us so the um video for do it in the dark features all of you either becoming zombies and jackie is a zombie all along in the video so why this obsession with the undead is that kind of linked to the idea of night nighttime in your music yeah, it's uh, exactly that. You know, we see the kind of the nightlife of kind of uh, the nightlife of kind of being a you know pretty crazy and sometimes bizarre phenomenon. So it's almost as if you know you've got zombies coming out of the <laughs> out of the ground at night and just being total wackos. Um, but also, you know, it's just the theme of doing it in the dark. It's like everything at night is hazy and fuzzy, and mm-hmm. it's just kind of like a you know wild time so um that plus we all love zombie movies we're really into the walking the dead campy sort of yeah well we love the walking dead we yeah. love you know the you know the dawn of the dead and night of the living dead all those uh, romero movies so um it's uh kind of a theme that we've always been into um the producer uh or the director that we work with um the company's called reactive pictures it's alan associano is the the guy who we always kind of bounce our, our themes with. So he did the first video for us for Kill Count with the exploding wrestlers. And mm-hmm. yes, the he was really wrestlers. into the idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was really into the idea of doing something that included, you know, a dark forest. And at first it was maybe going to be some sort of a monster that you don't see. And then, um, we know back and forth just kind of came to the decision that zombies would be pretty cool. And, Fun, and fun it's a little girl little zombies that started video. off too. So like, what could be creepier than little girl zombies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Before I progress to the kind of fun questions, um, the, this is a question we always ask our 
interviewees. What is the last thing you listen to on your portable listening device? Oh, gosh. Today I was, well, we were listening to a lot of um, Bruno Mars. Okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> kind of surprising. Kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, we've been into into him lately. I've been watching videos and stuff just because his band's really fun to watch. Mm-hmm. He's got a great voice. Yeah. Um. So now I have a few fun, quick, like, think on your toes, would you rather questions. Um. Would you rather eat only sweet or salty for the rest of your life? Um, probably salty because, you know, there's many varieties of salty, so. <laughs> <laughs> and you can Probably eat more too. Than... Would you always feel too warm or too cold? Uh, probably too warm. Um, would you rather be a vampire or a zombie or a unicorn? Serious question here. Seriously, uh, a unicorn. <laughs> Good. I was hoping that would be your response. Um, and the yeah. final one, which I think is kind of pertinent because you are a musician, um, would you rather be only able to listen to vinyl or digital for the rest of your life? So think portability. That's something to keep in mind. Um, I would say vinyl because, uh, yeah, in terms of digital portability, if it's you know crappy digital quality, it ends up sounding really bad. So I would I would prefer to you know only be able to listen to vinyl, but have it be in places where the sound's going to be good. <laughs> good response, because you cover all your bases. Yeah. So for everyone tuning in, the balconies will be performing tomorrow at Norma Jeans. Um, you go on at ten fifteen, and I checked the website, and there are only about twenty tickets left. They're fifteen dollars in advance and twenty at the door. And you're performing in Toronto tonight at Lee's Palace, and it's sold out. So have a wonderful show. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it should be fun. Um, so you should check them out. This was Liam from The Balcony. So thank you so much for uh, talking to me, Liam. Well, thank you. Okay.